humanitarian workers often risk their safety to help others. But who helps humanitarians when they need protection? Addressing climate change, a new report from the United Nations paints a daunting picture of the future. Reconciliation in South Sudan will meet community residents making efforts to encourage peace in the neighborhood. Africa 54 starts right now. Hello and welcome to Africa 54. I'm Chamberlain who saw a channel television here in Lagos. I'm joined by Vincent Macquarie at Voice of America in Washington. Well, thanks. I'm Vincent Macquarie at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Let's start off with a look at protecting humanitarian workers. Chamberlain also in Lagos brings you that story. The United Nations is calling for more collaboration with the Nigerian government to better protect aid workers in the Northeast. At an event to commemorate this year's World Humanitarian Day, officials of the organization highlighted the challenges faced by first responders, particularly women, as well as millions of civilians caught in conflict. Channel TV's correspondent Kayla Megua has more. The United Nations and its partners are aiming to reach 6.2 million people in need of life-saving humanitarian assistance in 2019. The funding appeal for 2019 is $847.7 million. As of the 31st of July, 2019, $326.9 million has been received. Between January and March of 2018, the United Nations had 94 partners implementing humanitarian activities in the Northeast. And since the Boko Haram insurgency started in 2009, 37 aid workers have been killed. These humanitarians who died in the process of providing aid to these crisis-prone areas are being honored here at the United Nations. Let me add my, ad by admonishing humanitarian workers not to be dismayed by the risk in their services, but remain focused, united in purpose and resolute in the spirit of humanity. The Office for Social Affairs and Gender for ECOWAS says the focus this year is women, because among other things, women are the first responders in any disaster, and calls for more government policies to help protect humanitarian workers. The ECOWAS Commission is happy to work with all partners to sensitize the public during peace and conflict times of the need not to see humanitarians, particularly female humanitarians, as targets. Humanitarian workers must be respected and protected at all times. Humanitarian work in the northeast of Nigeria requires collaboration from various agencies, both in the protection of aid workers and in ensuring that the direct victims of insurgency receive all the help they need. And the Ministry of Health details the role they play in this regard. We started out with a Northeast response. Why did we start with the Northeast response? Because while we've had humanitarian issues all over the country, the humanitarian need in the Northeast was very urgent and was very elaborate. These are the names of health workers who died while providing humanitarian service in Nigeria between 2013 and 2018. Humanitarian workers generally are a direct target, especially in Northeast Nigeria when Boko Haram attacks, which is why there's a call today for better policies to keep them safe. Kayla Magwa, Channel Television News. All right, now to speak more on uh, protecting aid workers in conflict areas, we're joined by Ulubenro Olaji Yigbe, who is the Executive Director of Emergency and Risk Alert Initiative. Welcome to the program. Uh, Thank you very much. Let's asking for the importance, first of all, tell us about that, the role that women play in humanitarian areas and conflict areas as well. Well, let me quickly state that it is uh, unthinkable to 
achieve any success in any humanitarian intervention without uh, the role of women. From relief to resilience, they are important actors in terms of uh, uh, supporting and pro uh, supporting the, uh, those that are affected and those who are uh, with uh, humanitarian challenges. So the duty of humanity, benevolence, altruism, compassion, care, and support, uh, uh, including bringing bad people to their feet, uh, humanitarian responsibility that the women have shouldered over the years, and they have played this road credibly well. So there's been a number of reported cases of sexual abuse and violence perpetrated against female aid workers. What issues do you think need to be highlighted urgently to address this? Uh, that speaks to the shrinking nature of humanitarian space that we have. The environment is becoming so hostile, and part of the uh, problem is the pattern of abuse that follow. Prominent among them is this sexual uh, and gender violence. And the way out of this is for us to begin to understand the pattern of abuse that trail these uh, uh, humanitarian conditions and to respond to that from the level of uh, 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 national legal confines, to respond for it through appropriate planning by responding agencies, organiz humanitarian organizations must be completely sensitive and understand the pattern of abuse that, are, that should be expected so that they can plan against them, train their workers, particularly women, so that they will be able to uh, uh, reduce vulnerabilities of these women to uh, any form of abuse, particularly sexual and violence. So speaking a little more broadly now, and with particular reference to the legality and laws which you highlighted in passing, what impact do you think legislation can have in producing or guaranteeing the conducive environment for them to operate? The fact is that uh, the growing concern is that we are having failure on the side of uh, uh, inside of respect for humanitarian principles, and even humanitarian law is declining in terms of obedience. We have international humanitarian law that is uh, always obeyed uh, in, in, in abuse, in denial. I think what the government can actually do, especially the state uh, like Nigeria where you have humanitarian challenge, is to put in place uh, so, so, some rules, some laws uh, protecting humanitarian actors. They need to be of concern to government. If you look at a uh, uh, state, state is focusing on those affected without focusing on those that are responding to uh, the affected population. I think that is what we should begin to uh, uh, talk about with the shrinking space uh, for humanitarian intervention. You know, what, there what, must what, be what, national law in place. Right. For us to one more thing, pardon me for jumping in there, for, for those who say that uh, another trigger of violence against uh, humanitarian aid workers is the distribution of uh, insufficient materials to communities who require them. They think that this fuels some of these actions of violence against those uh, who are first responders. How can that, this that, be addressed? That, that call into play the responsibility of responding agencies and organizations. There must be adequate plan. I often say, I state in all situations, that if you cannot seek an appropriate res uh, response, do not respond at all. Appropriate response in this context means that the quality of your response, the, 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 the quality of your response that will not take away the humanity of the people you are responding to. Uh, this is uh, built on the fact that irrespective of the condition of the people, they, re they, 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 they remain human. So they should not be uh, subhumanly treated. And that can only happen when organizations and uh, agencies come uh, adequately before responding. All right, then, Mr. Olugbin Ru Olaju Igbe, Executive Director of Emergency and Risk Alert Initiative. Thank you for joining us today on Africa 54.